Hey everyone, welcome back to Pureology. Diving into the world of Escape from Tarkov is really tough and building and optimizing a PC for the title is no exception. Today I've got my Budget B 7500F set up here. The CPU can be found for about 130 bucks. This motherboard I've seen go for 70 used and 100 new. So pretty cost effective, good setup here for Tarkov. The 7500F was an easy choice because of its price to performance ratio. The B650 was very cost effective, so that was the easy part. But here's where things can get tricky for a lot of people, the RAM selection. With options ranging from 32 to 48 to 64 gigs, XMP or Expo rated, dual rank, single rank, the dilemma of mega transfers per second versus CAS latency, what's more important? I think it's very easy to get lost in the choices of RAM available today. So I decided to put my setup to the test and escape from Tarkov's factory and streets maps. I used SK Hynix ADI RAM at different speeds and CAS latency ratings. And I paired it with my trusty 4060 Ti right here. And the goal to find that elusive sweet spot between price and performance. Stay tuned to find out if you should really spend more of your hard earned sweat equity on a higher mega transfers per second or CAS latency rating kit and where you can get the most bang for your buck. All right, so here's how I set it up. 1440 medium settings, DLSS balanced. And for the offline tests, I did no AI to set the ceilings for performance. So I ran three raids in four different speed and latency configurations. Stock at 5200 CL42, 6000 mega transfers per second at CL42 to see the impact of increasing transfer speeds first. Then I tried 5200 CL30 with Buildzoid timings. Shout out to Buildzoid. I've got a link for the video I used in the description. The guy is an absolute genius. Go check him out and 6000 CL30, again with Buildzoid timings to compare performance with tuned sub timings. I've also included a new stat here, the 99% percentile FPS. This is different from an average. If there are 1000 stored values, this is value number 990 of the stored values. Basically, it should help show how much the FPS rubber bands on the map. So this was after a few runs on each, the averages I got were 141 for the stock, 156.8 at DDR5 6000 stock timings. 5200 at Buildzoid timings did better than both of those. And then on top was DDR5 6000 with Buildzoid timings. The difference between the stock and Buildzoid was, you know, less than 10%. And in the margin of error, I consider for Escape from Tarkov. So if there's a large price difference between, you know, getting some higher timing 6,000 sticks or some really low timing 6,000 sticks, I think I'd still take the higher timing ones. Moving on to the streets offline run. The 6,000 stock timing and the 5,200 buildzoid timings did a switcheroo and the two 6,000s are on top. The two 5,200s are below. The 5,200 stock, again, was the lowest performer, but interestingly, it did have a higher 1% low average than the buildzoid timings. There was less than a 10% difference in average FPS, 1% low average FPS, and even the 99% percentile FPS between the best performing configuration and the worst performing. Considering that level of performance difference between a finely tuned DDR5 setup and a bone stock configuration, like literally plug and play, no tuning, no tweaking, just plug it in and go. I believe that potential price disparity between a high-end RAM kit and what's considered an entry-level one could be better allocated elsewhere. Investing in areas like a top-notch monitor, a high-quality keyboard, or a lightweight mouse, for me, offers a far more substantial impact to my personal experience. 
All right, moving on to streets online. The 5200 Buildzoid timing surprisingly took the lead in online tests. There was a noticeable performance disparity, particularly evident with the improved Buildzoid timings. Even though the 6000 stock timing run displayed an outlier 1% low average FPS, the speed itself doesn't really appear to influence much. However, the sub timings do seem to make a noticeable difference. There was roughly a 10 FPS gap on the 5200 between the two different sub timing sets. So given that usually even lower rated RAM kits with loose timings can be tightened a little bit with some tuning, I'd probably look for a cost effective RAM kit with decent timings rather than maxing out with the fastest rated sticks available if I were building or upgrading right now. If you play on high settings in 1440 or 4K, then maybe you could spend a little extra on capacity, but for speed, I would not hunt for those fastest sticks. So at the end of the day, it seems like fine tuning those sub timings can help you squeeze out a little extra performance. If you're in the process of building or upgrading a PC, especially on the AM5 platform, I'd suggest considering investing in a cost effective RAM kit and allocating more budget towards a premium keyboard, monitor, or mouse. Often these peripherals are overlooked, but they can truly elevate your overall experience. Personally, I prioritize the monitor first, as it's what we're constantly looking at, followed by the keyboard and mouse. These three components control how connected I feel to the experience on screen, so I pay a lot of attention to them. And that's why I set aside a large proportion of my building budget to these components. All right, that's all I got. Thanks for tuning into the video, everyone. Your support means the world to me as I continue working towards creating content full time. If it was helpful, informative, or entertaining in some way, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more content like this. If you have any more questions about building, upgrading, or optimizing, feel free to join my Discord and shoot me a message. My username is Puri with three eyes, and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. Alright, it's time to get back to the grind. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.